let me say this. If you're the type of person, and I hear you say, if I ever hear you say, I don't like her. I don't like him. And you say that to me, or I hear you saying that, and you don't say it to their face. You haven't said nothing to their face as to why. If I find out that you're not a person who can be assertive and direct and go to that person and talk to them about why you don't like them, if I find out you don't even have a reason for it, you just don't like them, why not? You know what? If I hear that kind of shit, I don't like you. That's right. Show sure don't. Depends on, and I don't care. I don't care if you're somebody's fucking mama. I don't care if you're somebody's auntie. I don't care if you're somebody's sister, their daddy, their husband, their wife. I don't care who you are, their best friend. I don't give a shit. If I hear you talking like that, I don't care how old you are either. Y'all are going to stop all that gaslighting me and, oh, we got to feel sorry for this one and this one over here because they don't, don't shatter their fragile psyche. Don't, they, well, they might just be, oh, no, no, there's no fucking excuse for two-faced, manipulative, gaslighting, emotionally abusive motherfucking people. No excuse. Period. I know, and I know that's why people don't like me. I know that's why my circle is real small. I know that. Because I'm not licking ass to be liked. I don't have to. I'm, I don't give a fuck. I'm not running no popularity contest. I don't give a shit who I have to lose. I don't care how many nights I have to cry about whatever I cry about. I don't care how sad it is. I don't have to take emotional and psychological abuse. I don't have to be around dysfunctional, warped-ass people that, that talk like that, that act like that. I'm And I don't want to hear y'all's gaslighting shit either. Well, that's just mean. I could never tell them I don't like them, or I could never talk to them about what's actually wrong. You're just mean. But you can sit the fuck up behind their back. <laughs> I don't really like them. <laughs> what are you plotting on them now? What are you going to do to them? <laughs> what kind of passive aggressive cowardly fuck shit are you going to do to them? I can't stand snakes like that. But y'all always get y'alls. You know, you know, the person that you're doing it to might not physically see it, but let me tell y'all something. You're always seen. Don't ever forget that. You're always being watched. Don't ever forget that. It is being noted. Don't ever forget that. You cannot escape that. That energy that you are putting out, that intention, don't ever forget it. Just because that person didn't see you do it or hear you say it, it's still being seen. It is still being seen. Absolutely. I can't stand that shit though. <clears throat> People that sit around like that. I don't like, I don't like, I don't like her. And I don't like her. And I don't, she's, oh, she's just, uh. And I don't like him because he just, uh, uh. For what? Jealous? What? And sometimes people's parents will be acting like this. Yeah. I don't like my, uh, my son's ex. Or I don't like my, my daughter's husband. Or I don't like, and a lot of times, it, it, it's for no other reason except they're jealous. Because they have issues that they haven't dealt with. Because their son or daughter has gotten involved with somebody or their spouse is strong and emotionally healthy and they're not going to put up with that garbage. They will call it out. When they see misbehavior or disrespect or bullshit like that, they will call it out. And a lot of times that new person is really good, really good human being. And they don't like that. No, no, they want, they want their kid, literally, okay? This goes back to my video on the narcissistic ass parents. They want their grown child to be with somebody lower level, lower vibrational, uh, 
manipulative, cheating, old skank, so that that mom, that dad, whatever, that parent can feel good and you know like oh yeah my my they want their child to be down on that level i'm telling you so that that child can always come crawling crying to them mommy mommy she hurt me mommy i told you son i told you mommy will always love you she was not good for you nobody will love you like mommy does there's a lot of parents out there like that and dads too Dads, too, getting pissed off because their children are somebody else is stepping up in their child's life, the grown child, the, the teenage child, whatever, and spending time. And they grew up admiring that person, whether it's an uncle or a grandparent, where the father might not have been able to be present. I went through all these kinds of shit, all kinds of shit like this in my life. I know the dynamics. And that grown ass aging father will have the audacity to get pissed off at their grown kids because he failed because he didn't step up and do right how you gonna get mad because somebody else did wouldn't it wouldn't you want someone to do it wouldn't you want the children to be happy and feel cared for where you couldn't do it i'm just saying y'all i'm sorry but i had to spout that shit out of my mouth I, it, it might not even all be coming out right, but I had to get that out. I, th it just comes from different places. Thoughts, experiences in my past, shit I'll be thinking about, flashbacks, shit I listen to on my YouTube. I, it just reminds me of things. And I've been around people like that before. I don't care who it is. And no, I don't excuse it. Stop that gaslighting shit. I don't care if they're 85 or 19. I don't excuse it. And for these people saying don't shatter their fragile psyche i'm sorry what now hold up so you're saying that lying and humoring people's dysfunction humoring people's emotionally abusive ways is better than telling them the truth listen most of the people that have said anything like that to me before I can't tell you how creepy that sounds to me really it sounds it sounds like the van driver with the candy kind of shit like drink the Kool-Aid kind of shit. Sounds like you're saying, shh, keep them dumbed down. Keep them, keep them mentally, you know, confused. Uh, there are people out there like that. They want people around them to be confused, mentally ill, strung out. They gravitate and they prey on people with some type of issue like that. Do they want to help them get better and see the truth? in a nice way. I'm not talking about walk in and say, hey, you're delusional. You can't do that to a person with severe mental illness, depending on what their level is. I grew up in a whole family of it. I know what I'm talking about. No, you're not going to do it like that, you extreme brain narcissist. Get over yourself. Nobody said do it like that. Get your brain out of the extremes. I can't stand that. That's what a narcissist does. They don't know anything about balance. Of course, tact. You're, of course you're not going to go in and say that. But helping, but you also don't care about that person's well-being. You are not genuine. You're not saying that because you want to protect their psyche at all. And really guide them towards their truth or what can really help them maintain and get to a level of clarity the most level of clarity that they maybe can get to fuck no hell no you want to keep them fucked up and confused that's what you do yeah for your benefit because that makes you feel like the big man on campus then you feel superior it helps you feel less fucked in the head yeah, I know all those slimy ass tricks, maneuvers, and tactics. So I don't even want to hear that shit. Protect their fragile psyches. Don't shatter it. Do you know how creepy that sounds to me? Especially knowing, knowing what you're running around doing, knowing what y'all folks, what some of y'all folks are running around doing, how you're preying on those people. It benefits you to keep them broken. Yes, it benefits you. To, for them to stay confused and mental 
course you would never suggest a counselor to them. Of course you would never help them, point them to a rehab or, fuck no. You, that makes me sick. That you prey on people like that. And you want to stand in everybody else's face and tell them that you care. You're helping them. No, you're not. And you're using them for your own nasty ass benefit. Your own manipulative, sick shit. Whatever you can get off of them. And the closer you get them to you, the more abusive you're going to become. The more fucking liberties and privileges you're going to take with that person's life. Their feelings. Their, their whole life. The more you're going to cross lines and boundaries. You're testing. You're conditioning in the very beginning when you're running around with a person. The whole time. Yep. Preparing. Yeah. Yeah. This is some fucked up shit, y'all. I'm sorry, but I have been around some fucked up shit in my early life. And then I protected myself for many years and my children. And then somehow I fell back in to some fucked up shit. But you know what? Just as much as I didn't know what the fuck had hit me and come into my life, dumb, 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 those motherfuckers didn't know what the fuck hit them with me either. Because I gave it back to them just like they slang it. I ain't scared of y'all. I don't have to take that shit. I don't feel embarrassed. I don't give a fuck. I don't y'all I don't need y'all to like me. I, I I really don't. Those days of you uh holding shit over my head and and uh forcing me to uh grovel and beg and work harder for your fucking approval just because somebody didn't give it to you when you were little or growing up and you haven't healed that wound yet, and so you go out target and prey on people to do that to. I don't need your fucking approval. There's plenty of people out here that, that I can associate with that will appreciate my friendship. I don't, I don't give a fuck. I don't need your approval. And same thing. I got caught in that web for too long in my past. Same thing. I don't need anybody's mama's approval either. I don't need anybody's parents' approval. I don't need their family's approval. For the people that can see the real me... The certain ones that can see the real me and my heart and they respect that, then I'm good with them. For the rest of them, I don't need them to fucking like me. In fact, I like it that you don't. And I never talked about what happened to me when I first, early on in that last relationship, what happened to me. The the attack, how I was ganged up on for absolutely no reason. This was where I was really brand new. I barely knew these people. I was just helping this person out that was a distant friend of mine who had lost a child. I barely knew them, these people. How they flip gears and flip switches on me and what they fucking pulled on me. And I was just being a compassionate friend, loving this person. You know, mental illness is a serious fucking thing. It really is trauma and emotional uh, dysregulation and personality disorders and uh, people out here adding drugs and alcohol to it and they got problems with their parents and shit and it just boils over and then for them to be going out homie hopping or trying to get in romantic involvement that is the last thing they need to be doing and listen, this shit is all up in the family. It's up, it's, it's up in the bloodlines. It's all, it's all in there. Oh. And I'm glad that I know better. I'm glad that I was shown better. That's the only thing that protected me. Because I would have been dog shit. I would have been turned into mince meat. Sometimes you fall into snake pits in this life, guys. You do, and you have to be prepared. Sometimes you don't even know what hits you. Had I not come from the fucking background that I came from, had I not had some training and some experience, I mean, I bet there are people that actually do end their life after encountering a narcissistic family full of narcissistic vipers that attack right and left, just all over the place. I really do feel like that's what happened to Shanann Watts. I do. That I, I, I've got to finish up the video series on that on my YouTube channel. Chris Watts murdered his entire family. Pregnant wife, two, two baby girls. Um, I really feel like she fell into a family of vipers. To a narcissistic 
husband, covert narcissistic. I believe the mother was fucking narcissistic as hell. I believe that mother and son, uh, it was a toxic relationship there that nobody ever got help for it. Nobody ever suggested counseling, therapy, something. I don't, I don't know what the father was doing, Ronnie. I don't know, you know, that, that whole shit, I believe the whole Watts family. And I come from a toxic family, so it takes one to know one. I can see shit, you know? But see, in my family, at least we got court ordered to therapy. And at least we bust each other out. We say what the fuck we feel. And now I'm glad. After be oh my God. You might think that's mean. I don't give a fuck. I'm glad now. I'm glad my family just says it like they motherfucking feel it to each other. And then we really are cool right after that. We don't hold no grudges. We love each other. It's these families that sweep feelings under the rug. And I can't say that. I'm really mad. I'm really hurt. But you're hurting my feelings. Don't say that to me. And it's these passive aggressive, no talking families where shit gets real demented. It can get real crazy. No wonder that dude, I don't fucking excuse it a bit, but I'm saying it makes sense that coming from a no talking family, most likely we don't say those things. Well, I heard Cindy Watts. She despised Shanann's mother and Shanann's beautiful family because they were very open, very assertive, very loving people, very connected people, emotionally deep. And they saw, say what they feel to each other. They express that shit. And she didn't like Shanann's family for that. Cindy judged them for that shit. Well, we just don't talk, you know. We don't talk like that. Yeah, I bet you don't. And look what your son turned into. I'm just saying. No wonder. I bet that, that dude was ready to boil over with rage because nobody encouraged his ass to talk. Nobody made it safe to communicate. Don't do that. The parents that do that, you're hurting my feelings, son. Don't say that to me. Do you know how much rage that causes inside of a growing young man to have to stuff that down inside? For his mother not to take responsibility for her fucking actions. Or for however she made him feel. Or the dad too. Same shit. But the man will grow up and take that. Eventually that shit will come out on his wife. Anyway. I'm going to close this one out guys. But I don't like it. I just don't. I, I really don't. You know. And. I'm done. I'm done listening to the narcissistic gaslighting dumb shit. I don't listen to y'all. I know my place. I know where and when to, to say certain things. They're so fucking demented and twisted and gaslighting. Oh, well, you're mean. And you probably, you would just walk up in a room full of people and you'd probably just, -ba 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 -da. you'd probably say this and you'd probably just hurt people's feelings. And you're, you're mean. You are hurt people. Give me a break. Your manipulative shit isn't working. It's not working. I guess that's why I did so well in customer service for so many years, huh? <laughs> mm -mm -mm. I can't stand it, and I'm coming for y'all. I'm, I'm, I'm going to let it be known. I'm okay with that. I don't need none of y'all's fucking approval no more. Those days are over. I don't beg for anybody's approval. So if you're sitting up talking two-faced shit. And you're a passive-aggressive snake. I don't care if you're 77 or 7. Okay, well, 7 still needs a little guidance. But you get what I'm saying. If you're talking shit about somebody else. And you have never confronted that person to their face. And given them a chance to know what they did wrong. You have never, ever gone to them and said, listen, I have a problem with this. Can we talk about it? I don't like the way you said or you did this. Can we talk about it? You have never given them that much respect. You've never cared enough to confront the actual problem. Or is it that you don't have a fucking reason to dislike them?
Is it just they are somebody brand new or somebody in your uh, family's life or your friend's life that is moving you over out the way a little bit in your place where you should be? And that grown child or that best friend or wherever the fuck it is, is doing something that makes them happy with someone that makes them happy. With a strong, is it that you don't like strong, assertive people that are good-hearted, that can see through snakes? Maybe you don't like that. Or, you know, maybe some people are really jealous like that. Now, if you got fucked over by that person, then you have a reason to be angry. I'm not talking about people that have an actual legitimate reason to be disliking somebody or angry with them. Uh, some of us have uh, legitimate reasons, and that's fine. But I'm saying if you are sitting up with no legitimate reason at all, then you're jealous. You're envious. They've done nothing to you. They didn't step on your toes. They didn't take anything from you. They didn't say anything about you. They've never hurt you. Especially for parents. Then here's what I'm saying. If that's your best friend or your child or whoever that relation is to you, you should want them to be happy. You should be glad that they are with someone who is strong and powerful and assertive and yeah, it's going to help their consciousness open up and they're going to learn new things and oh, you don't like that, do you? Uh Uh-uh. You want them to stay sick, don't you? Yeah, because that way you'll keep getting your narcissistic supply and you'll feel relevant. When all your kids are grown and gone, you'll still feel relevant. You'll still have somebody crawling back going, Mom, oh, you need, just like the typical narcissist, just like you pass down through the bloodline, you need somebody else to feel terrible, miserable for you to feel good, right? We're going to talk about that in an upcoming video. How highly narcissistic people are so miserable. The only way they can feel good is by luring people in to torment or to manipulate or to undermine or drag them down. They need other people to feel miserable, confused, less than, broken, not smart enough, not quite good enough. Okay? And it's on all levels. The 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 men, the women, narcissists do it to their romantic partners. Want them to feel a certain way. The narcissistic parents do it to their kids growing up and then the grown kids. So that That child will always feel that way. They won't get too far out away from mommy or daddy. They'll always be crawling back. And it'll make that parent feel good. I feel relevant still. I, I, I. Yes. Narcissists are like that. They want somebody else to feel terrible. Depressed. They want to keep you depressed and sad. All the little joy in your life. Whatever little thing you might focus on to give yourself some kind of happiness, they're coming to take it. I used to I used to say it reminds me of how I was treated in my well, I started noticing these patterns. And I'm sick of that shit. Don't tell me I can't talk about it. Don't tell me just because I tell the truth don't mean I didn't love that person. I'm a very loving person, honey. Uh-huh. I loves me some folks. But I saw what I saw. I experienced what I experienced. The truth is the truth. And I used to equate it to being the happy little girl playing in my little sandbox, playing my little toys, whatever, already going through hell and abuse uh, on my own in my own life, been through hell anyway, and just happy, content little person trying to do what I do with my little toys. And this fucking bully comes over and kicks my shit out the damn way. The little playground bully. That's what it reminded me of. That's what it reminded me of. Every little tiny thing that I tried to find enjoyment in. It it angered him. It depressed him. It made him angry and he wanted to take it from me. Sabotage it. Destroy it. Any little tiny thing that was meaningful to me, including himself, including my love for him, including my dreams and goals for our relationship, how, you know, 
whatever positive loving spin that I put on everything. It's like he was determined to ruin every single day and make it chaotic, depressing, all that shit. And now he's gone and found somebody willing to live that way. Poor thing. <laughs> now he's gone and found somebody that's really just desperate to so that he can make her constantly miserable, feel bad about herself all day so that he can feel good. That's too bad because I showed sure and want to live that way. I knew I was like, oh my God, I know this is going to hurt me. I know I'm going to miss this person because I love that person. We had some good times, but oh my God, the shit that that's not for my life. That is not what God plans for my life. That's, that's wrong. You, you can't just take hostages like that. You know what I'm saying? Even though I willingly went, I willingly, but a narcissist, you don't know what you're getting into. You don't realize what you're signing up for. And that's basically, to me, that's taking a hostage. It really is. You're lying your fucking what, ass off. You're deceptive. You're manipulative. You're fake. You're phony. Um, but yeah, that's not for me. That is not for me. And y'all can have that. That I'm going to make another video about that at some point. Like, that's so stupid to me. Like, why do all that? I know back when people are younger, they got that whole thing about, yeah, they love to be toxic and drama. And they love to fight and make up and have sex. And it's so passionate. No, it's not. No, it's fucking not. Half these motherfuckers. Motherfucker, if you're old enough to be on goddamn heart pills and blood pressure medication and fucking needing a walker and shit to get around, I mean, some of these fools are getting old and they know it. And they're out here trying to run around with these younger folks and keep up with their drug habits and... <laughs> I'm sorry. I just... It is too much. If you're that old, you should know better. Uh trying to talk about being up in a chaotic relationship. She's pulling knives and boy, isn't she something? She's psycho. She's crazy. Y'all are lame. I'm sorry. Y'all are fucking lame. Meanwhile, I'm going to go on and heal myself. Um, I don't know what my future holds, but it won't be that shit. It'll either be me on my own or me with my new person. And uh, I'm going to work towards a more peaceful life. We're going to have some We're gonna have some fine dining. We're going to eat some good food. And we're going to kick it in and lay up together and chill and maybe take some trips. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to dream big, okay? I'm going to work towards a really nice, chill future. I don't know what these fools do in their relationships, but that shit is ridiculous to me. And... For the people on the outside looking in to what I was involved in in the past, I never did like it. I never was the one wanting to buy into all that bullshit. I know it looked like that. It looked toxic. But no, it was me trying to get some progress made. It was me trying to have a beautiful day every day with the person that I loved. A normal, beautiful day to celebrate every day. To get along to have beautiful experiences together every day, even if they were just simple things like having a meal together or I cherish all those little things in my life. Everyday um, activities are sacred to me, you know? And for somebody with a personality disorder or who is so goddamn angry and grief-stricken and miserable and they don't really want to work on it, they're all addicted and got all this shit going on, they will literally sit there and cling to your leg and beg you not to leave them. Beg you for your nurturing, your love, your peace, your affection, that maturity and peace that you bring to them, that healing, but at the same time, sit there and sabotage the fuck out of you. Torment the shit out of you. Just constant, causing constant chaos and constant, and after a while, yeah, you'll start getting pulled down into reacting to it. Oh my God. God, it has taken me so long to wash that residue off of me, that energy that didn't belong to me, that wasn't my energy.
I just don't get it. I really don't get it. But anyway, yeah, for y'all folks that act like that, why don't you try at least caring about a person enough to confront them and tell them what they did wrong? You know, instead of sitting back like a coward, I don't, especially people's parents ganging up talking shit about the person they're dating. I would feel like a monster if I did that. I don't care what my son's girlfriends or wives did. I would never treat them that way. I would never sit up with my son and talk shit about his partner. Because you know what? That would actually be disrespecting my son. They might not tell me, hey mom, that's disrespectful, don't do that. Well, yeah, my sons would because I raised them to do that. But a lot of times they may not say that to you, but I promise you your grown child feels disrespected somewhere deep in their mind that you're talking shit about their choice of, I just wouldn't do that. Um, so yeah, if you're in somebody's life and you care about that person at all, give them a chance to know what they did wrong. And I know, I know a lot of y'all toxic folks are scared. That's mean. We can't tell them. We can't actually communicate with them. Well, it's because a lot of times narcissistic people only knew two modes. They only know two modes. Real extreme or nothing at all. They feel like, well, I either got to attack this person viciously or I can say nothing at all. Really? Can't you regulate your temperature, buddy? You know, y'all, somebody, yeah. regulate your temperature. You can talk to somebody about the problem you're having with them and let them know what they did wrong and see if it can be worked out instead of talking shit behind their back and acting like a passive-aggressive snake. That's fucked up. All right, y'all.